Today is the day you start becoming the self-compassionate, empowered, and motivated version of yourself that you always wanted to be. Are you ready to explore your untapped potential? Welcome to Untapped. I'm your host, Starla, and I'm about to help you reach your ultimate goals every time we chat and we tap. So let's go. It's time for you to take control of your life, and it starts today. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for joining me on season two of Untapped with me. Um, I am having a fantastic start to the new year. I have put emphasis in different areas where I haven't concentrated my efforts before. And honestly, of course, I'm aware of New Year's resolutions and I know that people make them and I'm pretty sure I've probably made some myself here and there. But I think when I've done that in the past, I must have done it in such a non-committal way because I can't remember one time where I've gone, yay, I've succeeded with this New Year's resolution. And that's why I'm making this episode today because I know what works when it comes to New Year's resolutions. And I absolutely know what doesn't work. So I'm going to tell you what I've been doing so that you can do the same thing if you'd like to try some of these things and see if they work in your life, your circumstances. Um, And also explain why New Year's resolutions don't work for a lot of people and why it burns out so quickly. There's so much power at the beginning of January The energy is all-encompassing. Everybody wants to do better, be better, create more. And if you can immerse yourself in that collective energy, you can really make it work for you rather than against you. So this is what I have been doing. And I have such a big smile on my face because I have just been allowing so much into my life and by doing that and changing that frequency and switching on that allowing frequency I mean it's just the 4th of January and it's already blowing my mind with the amazing things that are happening and the opportunities that I'm being given so let me start off by explaining one simple thing that you can start doing every single day And if you're listening to this right now and it's, you know, a few months in the future, we've passed the new year, it doesn't matter when you're listening to this, you can apply this any single day of your life. Like every day is day one if you choose for it to be the beginning of something fantastic and great. So I use this sentence with anything that I don't want to do, (laughs) okay? So instead of instead of thinking, I really don't want to do this. Uh, I know it's going to be good for me. So, okay, let's, for example, take social media. I don't want to do TikTok specifically. Like, I don't want to have to meet these standards that are out there that you have to do, tick all these boxes. So, I was like, but I've got to do this marketing. I mean, I run an online business. It's really important for my business for me to have my face out there and to be sharing my message and to help people to know more about what I'm about and how I can help them. So it's part of a parcel. If you're self-employed, you know, and you run an online business, it's just the stuff you've got to do. But when you say that sentence, you've got to do something. Oh, it's just like, seriously, the energy behind that is just so like, sod that. I'm just going to go put my feet up and watch Netflix. I can't be asked. So what I started doing was saying, I get to. I get to do this. I get to do TikTok. There is a different energy behind that that one sentence, it's like, oh, I get to do this. Oh yeah, once upon a time, there was no such thing as TikTok. And look at some of these people's lives that have just transformed in the most amazing way. 
um, like, I can't remember his name. I think it's Sam something who has just exploded. He has the most incredible voice and he did the New Year's thing um, in England where he sang um, with a load of bands and things like that. And, you know, he he is, you know, like one in a billion kind of thing, but it's it's the fact that TikTok has actually done a lot of good for a lot of people. It's helped a lot of people and it's transformed lives in the most magical ways. So when I flipped that script into, I get to do this, I get to be on this incredible platform and I get to create, then I started thinking about some really cool ways that I could do marketing on TikTok. And that's going to start this month and I'm really excited about it now. It's gone from, I have to do this, oh, I don't wanna do this, to I get to do this, yes, okay, right, pumped up, let's go. Um, I don't mind doing housework because quite a long time ago I got into the frequency of enjoying it because I listen to music um, I put my my playlists on, I dance around the kitchen, I smile and I just get into it. I make it a positive and exciting experience for me. So most things are like that for me because I've trained myself. <laughs> you know, it's 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 been a journey. It didn't actually take that long though once I started to implement those changes. So don't think that it's going to take like two, three years before you can be dancing around and singing and enjoying doing the washing up. It really can just take a couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, anything like that can be as easy or as difficult or challenging as you perceive it to be and as if you, you you choose it to be. So whenever something comes up for you today, tomorrow, whenever, and you think, oh, I really don't wanna do that. Just think about all those reasons why you feel excited about getting to do that. Uh, I had to pay my car tax. I couldn't believe it. I got this letter through. I'd gone away to my family's for Christmas and then I came back and things were all shut down at this point, right? And I had this letter and it says, last reminder. And I'm thinking, where's the first reminder, guys? I am very good with my mail and there was no first reminder. To be fair, I should have just put it in my calendar though. <laughs> no one else's fault but my own. So, um... So I'm looking at this letter and I spoke to somebody about it and they were really like, oh, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to take all this paperwork down to the post office and you're going to have to do this. And I was like, oh, that's not my, that's not the way I do things. Like, I don't want to see this and feel this is such a difficult and challenging thing. Let's break it down. I love my car. My car gets me from A to B. I'm very grateful for my car. Therefore, I'm happy to sort this out. So I picked up the letter and it said, go online, type in a few letters, blah, 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 and your reference number. But that was until the end of December and we had gone into January. Okay. So then it said, just call this number. They were open till seven o'clock and it was... I swear like it was like 657 at this point when I saw this number and I just decided like this is gonna be easy I get to do this I get to do this like thing where I pay my tax now nobody else is paying it for me or anything you know this is this is my responsibility because I have this awesome car so why would I not want to take care of it and to, you know, pay road tax to contribute to having a better driving experience? This is what goes, these are the kind of things that go around in my head. This is how I stay so focused on being optimistic about life and not letting the crap of life take over. So anyway, so I call this number regardless. I didn't really care. There was three minutes to go. And I just said to myself, this is going to be really easy. And it was so easy. It's probably the easiest thing I've ever done. I spoke to a lovely man who said, oh, yeah, no problems. Just give me these details and these details. Yep, da 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 done. You don't need to do this for another year. That was it. It was like a five-minute 
phone call and he picked up the phone as well at like one minute past seven. So, you know, it wasn't a big deal. And it's really important to remind yourself every single day that if you choose to live this kind of lifestyle where you are more of an optimist, it can feel challenging to feel like you're living in a world full of pessimists and realists and realists that are actually pessimists, but they call themselves realists. But don't lose heart because this is your life and this is your choice to live your life this way. And we all know that if we're living our life this way, it just feels so much better. Life is easier. You can deal with challenging situations so much better. And when you feel sad and upset and angry, which we all do, I do as well, we have balance in those emotions. So I used to call myself an empath. And after a while, I realized how restricting that term was for me. And that it also gave the notion that I was not able to control my emotions. And I would much rather be the alchemist than the empath any day. So empath, empath, I know how that just sounded. I'm not that posh, darling. So therefore, keep going, keep keep immersing yourself in this energy even when it feels like you're the only person in the world that feels this way, because you're not. There are so many people out there that are choosing to live in a way where they just, they just think, you know what, I lived, I've lived my life so long worrying about stuff and counting up all the things that could go wrong if I was to make this choice and make this decision and make this leap in my life. And I'm so done with it. I'm going to follow my heart from now on. I'm I'm going to not be s- silly and, you know, do it in such a way where I just, I don't take care of myself or I don't think of others. Um, but I'm going to stop holding myself back from happiness. So keep the faith, guys. Okay, keep the faith. That's what I would say, because I have to say that to myself, because I see a lot of negativity every single day, and it does sometimes make me feel sad, and sometimes makes me feel powerless, but I always know I can always come back to myself. I've got a whole bunch of books that are like, you know, paper friends on my bookshelf, and I also have, you know, a lovely circle of people that I can always speak to and that I can I can put my head on their shoulder and say, I'm feeling this way. And they are not necessarily optimists. In fact, I think I have one friend who I would say is an optimist. But I love my family and I love my friends and we can coexist together in this same world, just not necessarily, you know, turning up to life every single day full of energy and vibrancy and positivity and everything. Because different people have different paths and to respect that is just the most amazing compassion you can ever have for someone. So you can absolutely coexist. The other thing I've been doing is going next level gratitude with this, what may sound ridiculous, but just stay with me here, okay? I am in the frequency of allowing. And when you get in the frequency of allowing, you are not just opening yourself up to allowing things like love into your life and exciting experiences, you're also allowing the challenging things. Because when you decide that you are no longer going to react to 
stuff that turns up in your life and you, you just like, you did not need that right now. You've got five other things going on. You didn't need number six. If you just allow that stuff to happen because it's going to happen for whatever reason, again, you're just so much more relaxed about life. You can get on with the things that really need your focus and enjoy life so much more. So I'll give you some examples and I I wrote these down in my journal. I journal every single day for multiple reasons. Sometimes it's in diary format. Other times it's uh, in that kind of therapist format. So it's when I'm talking to my inner guidance and I, I want answers to questions that I feel are just unbelievably difficult to get answers to. So I will write in in a way of like, I'm feeling really confused about this. I don't know what to do, blah, 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 blah. And then wait for the answer, write down the answer and just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing and just do that format. And then I also write down things like this. I also have a, a gratitude journal as well, because I think that's just so important for everyone's lives. Um, so here are the examples. So I allow feelings of doubt to creep up when they need to. I allow rainy days. I allow drivers on the road to be asses. <laughs> True story. I allow myself to have late nights. I allow myself to feel let down sometimes. Can you feel how easy that feels? Like, okay, I allow it. It's fine. It's okay. As my son would probably like to say over and over and over, he absolutely loves the character Chad on SNL. Um, And he's just like, all right, okay, that's fine. You know, it's such a relaxed approach. Like, all right, I'm not doing it properly, am I? But (laughs) that is the type of approach. It's just like, okay, I allow it. Okay, if my MOT doesn't pass and I have to pay a whole bunch of money on my car, which I don't think I'm going to, um, but you know, uh, okay, I allow it. I allow anything to come into my life. And when you allow that stuff as well, it's just not going to happen (laughs) because that is getting you on that vibrational patterning that you are just so cool and chill and positive and happy and in receiving mode that your true desires can start coming through. Your your ultra cool manifestations that you may have been waiting for for like ages will just start coming through because in one way or another, you may have been blocking them and you may have thought that, no, I really want this, but I do and I'm ready for it and I really want it. But then there can be other things like other areas of your life. You've been, you've been just unconsciously making them more challenging and not being in receiving mode. And to have an open heart, it encompasses everything in your life. It's not just about love or romantic love. It's also about loving yourself. And if you love yourself and you have self-compassion, then why would you not be in that allowing state of mind where you're just not going to fight it anymore? What's the point? What does anyone ever get out of anything when they fight a circumstance? They don't. And you're more likely to not be able to focus, not be able to create really positive solutions to challenges if you are worked up and stressed out. So therefore, this type of action can really create such positive effects. So New Year's resolutions start to work when you get on that frequency of allowing. Allowing yourself to start exercise and not do it one day. It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. Allowing yourself to 
say you're going to start five things this month and only do one because that is a massive accomplishment and that should never be seen as anything other than a massive accomplishment. I set myself this new thing as well that was it was just going to work like in harmony with what I was already doing. And I love doing that. I love creating more solutions just from one action. So I took my son to school this morning because the kids are back at school. And I decided when I came back and I parked my car, instead of going into my home, I was going to go for a walk. Just 10, 15 minute walk without my headphones, get in touch with nature, breathe some fresh air and just disconnect from anything that was going to happen through the day, like, you know, doing work and everything and making phone calls and running errands and just be, just be in that moment. And it was just so lovely because I got to be grateful for the things that people probably don't always find time to be grateful for. It's really easy to be grateful for your loved ones and to be grateful for your health and to be grateful for your amazing business. But what about those things that we don't always notice? When you go on a walk and you get to meet loads of really happy, enthusiastic dogs. I love dogs. And then you get to speak to the dog owners. So you get to have really interesting morning conversations that you weren't expecting and just enjoying being in nature switched off from the rest of the world and starting your day off just breathing in fresh air and and just having a moment just for you it's like a meditation at the end of the day And like I was saying, having those moments where you start to be grateful for the things that you wouldn't usually find gratitude for necessarily. So uh, I actually did this practice this morning when I was writing in my journal and I wrote some things that I'm grateful for that I wouldn't usually maybe have noticed had I not taken the time to be really conscious and mindful with this moment. So the first thing was my new radiator. Um, The second one was someone told me to look up the tambourine guy and this man made me smile so hard and I loved his energy. And I was just like, yes, the tambourine guy, he's incredible. Um, Funny videos that people send me, people making me laugh hard, yoga practices. Uh, I was grateful for the gym calling me and telling me that there was no class this week because it meant that I had time to put something else into uh, effect. I'm grateful for the trees that have lost their leaves because they look like ventricles and I just love that at this time of year. Uh, Pretty sparkly crystals, (laughs) Um, seeing dogs when I'm walking, the rainbows that cast in my living room, Uh, my slippers, I love my slippers and I'm grateful for them. Uh, Good quality tissues for blowing your nose, especially at this time of year. You want soft tissues, and I'm grateful for those. (laughs) Um, Certain people's magical laughs. That's something that we need to be more grateful for because there is magic in people's laughs. And so, yeah, it was just things that I don't usually find time to be grateful for and to be so specific about. And when I go on these morning walks now, I'm going to be even more mindful to to immerse myself in those moments of gratitude. Because gratitude, I don't, you know, someone can try and convince me otherwise, but there are two frequencies that are so unbelievably powerful. And one is love. We don't yet understand it properly do we I mean it is so powerful interstellar said it perfectly and 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 I totally agree with that um and you know gratitude and I will do an episode more about gratitude specifically how to use gratitude to really amplify every area of your life when you practice this like anything it just becomes part of your makeup it becomes part of your mindset and it's not a chore. 
you will just find it so easy to just go through life just feeling more grateful about things and then really watching life just explode in the most incredible way for you. Have an incredible day and I will speak to you soon and once again, happiest of New Year's. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a review. And if you want more Mindset Mastery with me, let's connect on YouTube, where we tap together and change our self-concept and our lives. You can find me on all my social media platforms. Just look for She's a Guiding Star. Have a fantastic day, and I will speak to you soon.